Welcome back to Ash on Comics. My name is Ash, and oh my gosh, I have a shit show <laughs> for you. Uh, this is, uh, it's, uh, where's the title of the, oh, it's at the bottom. That's where you're supposed to put the trade dress on a comic, right? Speak softly and carry a big fucking gun. Go, go, go. Do you see, get it? Because he carries a gun, and he's not a stick, and he took, he's cable, and oh, this, the, the humor of modern Marvel comics is so cringe. Um, Gary Duggan, I think, uh, I, I've, I've figured it out. This book was an epiphany for me. Gary Duggan, Jerry Duggan, I don't know how you pronounce his name, um, developed his sense of humor and his writing around that classic show Saved by the Bell. Do you remember that? No. Probably, if you're a millennial, it was probably even before your time. <laughs> but it doesn't stop you because things in pop culture influence the further things in pop culture. And writers take things from their world experience. Now, it used to be writers like Ernest Hemingway and things like that had real lives and real adventures and saw the world and were real men and had stories to tell because they saw things probably more than the average person did and were able to translate that to the page. Modern writers, more specifically writers in comic books, who really are just pseudo writers, they got thrown in to do the job because they'll work for peanuts. Their life experience is TV shows and web stuff and they don't see the world. They see a world that other people created for them. And it's sort of turned into this incestuous influence to where we're now reading new works that are not based on the world and life experience and real people. We're seeing stuff that's based off of fictional creations. And that's influenced the minds of these modern creators. Um, and Gary Dugan has turned Cable into Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell. Here we start off. Um, Right in the beginning, first panel of Cable number one, Kid Cable. This book should be called Kid Cable, by the way. Fuck you, Wolverine. Now, pardon my language. I don't actually know what Cable is saying. He could be saying, shit you, Wolverine, ass you, Wolverine, bitch. You. I don't know what cuss word he's saying because it's this, this really cool thing that's so hipster to do is do the fake swearing, you know, and put the, put the, whatchamacallit, um, the symbols to show, look, he's saying a bad word. We can't say it because it's comics. We don't have the balls to actually put the word fuck, but we're going to put it in there anyway. That's so stupid. Anyways, so Kid, Kid, Kid Wolverine is a teenager, by the way. Teenager, you know, is a minor. <laughs> Still has to ask his parents permissions for things. Uh, is saying, fuck you, Wolverine. This is one of the, you know, most premier elderly. I don't want to say elderly, you know, as like his age, but like just, he's an elder. He should have the most respect of all the X-Men ever. <laughs> Wolverine is at the top of the list. No, nope, fuck you, Wolverine. Uh, I, I bet you he wouldn't say that to X-23, though. I bet you. Sorry, and we'll continue. My name is Nathan Dayspring Ascani Sun Summers, but you can call me Cable. I'm fighting my Uncle Logan in one of my first battles in the quarry. Holy crack. Look at this. They couldn't even get the cool special effects, sound effects. It's like they literally just drew it in there with looks like colored pencil or crayon or who knows. Um, I know it seems like he has me right where he wants me, but watch this move. Time out. There you are, Zach. I've been looking all over for I, you. You time out. <laughs> Man, this is horrible. I just meant to get a car. If I don't find a way out of this, my life at Bayside is over. <laughs> time in. <laughs> that a joke? Bringing a fucking human idea into our dojo? Like, Wolverine, in all these years, I don't, I've never really heard Wolverine cuss. And it just seems so off here to, like... And it's 
human idea. Wolverine has been one of... The reason I've been liking Wolverine <laughs> in the Dawn of X books is because he's been the least pod person X-Men of the group. He feels like he's a character that hasn't been affected by whatever's going on, but now we clearly either Gary Duggan didn't get the memo or I've just been wrong. And now they're finally writing Wolverine like the pod person, all the other X-Men. It's a, a human idea. Or a dojo. Wolverine, do you understand that a dojo itself is a human idea? Do, do, sorry, I'm not even talking. Wolverine is just a fictional. Gary Duggan, do you understand that a dojo is a human? No, of course you don't. No, you don't. They didn't have dojos in Saved by the Bell. I'm not just looks and brains. I have telekinesis. Stop. Grrr. Ugh. Look, look at this punch. That is like the weakest looking, saddest looking punch that, first of all, would break Nathan's hand because Wolverine's face is made of adamantium, a.k.a. the hardest metal known to anyone. <laughs> he just punched an adamantium brick, essentially. And he punched it in with some lack... Uh, the, the t the lack <laughs> he killed one of my favorite guns but I still got a use for it I gotta sheath those claws so he uses telekinesis and puts them on Wolverine ka-chunk oh, Wolverine didn't see that coming so I can get in close yeah a bunch of drunks watching kids fight Wolverine you're only honking me off kid Use that heavy metal skeleton against him. So Garrett, apparently Gary Duggan does remember that Wolverine's skeleton is made of metal. <sighs> Let's finish this. I got a double date. Aw, is little Lo Logan's metal ass too heavy to move? Arr. You're not going to kill me, are you? Cable is victorious by pinning. This Wolverine just lays down. Witness mutant supremacy. So, just real quick here. I think you know what I'm going to say. To all those... I don't want to say anything disparaging towards anyone, but all those people who keep telling me, Ash, you don't know what you're talking about. This isn't a book about villains. Or this, this not about supremacy. What is this? What is this? Is this not about mutant supremacy? Tell me this book is not about mutant supremacy. Tell me that mutants aren't supremacists. Please. I, how am I misinterpreting this? Sorry. We'll go on. Yes! For the record, I would have my bet against Old Man Cable. Uh-huh. Give me the bottle here, Callisto. <laughs> Damn. Splatoon. Wolverine. Look at, look, have you ever seen Wolverine look so pathetic and stupid? <laughs> he just got beat by a little teenage boy. God, he just got beat by Zach Morris. <laughs> Boo! Yes, yeah, so here we have an actual X-Men fan <laughs> in the stands. Um, <laughs> look at, look at these guys. The L-O-G-A. What do you think it spells? Who do you think they're fans of? I guess you never bet against the Summers. Yeah! Grr, nice scrap, kid. You're lucky I don't want to tell your old man his son is in resurrection protocols. And you cheated with that TK. There's no cheating in the quarry, except for what Magic did. But hear me, mutants! A wager was made. Wolverine lost. The bargain must be honored. Oh, what? Do they have to now have butt sex? I don't know. What? Logan owes Cable a marker. Oh, a marker. Yay. Um... That was fun. See you home, Uncle Logan. Tee hee hee. Uh, then this, this just rubbed the salt in the wounds of every Wolverine fan ever. Well fought, Logan. Youth is coming for us all. Yeah, yeah. When are you going to face me? Is it your intention to give everyone on the island a marker? Shut up. D d did... Gary Duggan, he's like, does he, does, I just want to cut the balls off Wolverine. This is stupid. Here's the official combat rack, record of the quarry, um, by the way. And um, see if you can notice any women losing. Oh, look, Ash, there, there's women losing. 
Uh, no, no, there, there's not. The only time a woman lost, the, sorry, let me rephrase that. Did a woman lose to a man? Not once. The only time a woman lost is when it was two women. Now, Magic was disqualified, but I'm sure she would have just destroyed Gorgon in a fair fight. Blink went to a draw with Nightcrawler. Because get it, they're both teleporters. They can't beat each other, right? Nightcrawler has nothing on Blink. So stupid. Stupid. But every other time, yeah. Um, here's a two-page waste of time. Uh, look at this. Four, four freaking pages devoting to non-comic. A no longer... No longer the grizzled time-traveling fighter, the young Cable is ready to make the most of life on the mutant island nation of Kokoa. Luckily, there's plenty of trouble to get into. And so he's got a double date with these girls. They're like, really testosterific, Nate? My sarcasm detector is redlining. So where are we going to go to celebrate? Tokyo, Hong Kong, Hanoi. I already made reservations for us. This is like, look, it's, it's Zach Morris. He's got the teenage girls hanging on him. And then they run into this kid whose friend went in a place he's not supposed to go. And they're like, don't worry, we're going to go help him before the adults ever even know you did something wrong. And so they go, and it's a big, giant monster. Now, they got to fight him, so they got to save the kid. And they give him some drugs to make him feel all better. And then the kid, look, at it turns into a fucking Muppet. <laughs> what the now, presumably, this is the kid's perspective because he's high on this pixie dust stuff. Um, but Cable's like, fuck you, you fucking fuck. Except, I'm, I'm sorry, I got to say it like, fuck you, you fucking fuck. Because, you know, this is a kid whose balls haven't dropped. That was my last grenade. Let's see if my charms work on our friend here. I'll take that as a no. Of course it doesn't work. Of course the powers, of course your powers don't work. Um, so... They're fighting the monster over and over, and then Cable gets saved by his girlfriend, uh, or soon to be, will be girlfriend. Um, let's see. Sorry, I was checking the time. Eric Breen is checking the time. Um, I have a couple of questions for you as she sits on top of him. I'm listening. Did you know back when you were an old man when you recruited me for the X-Force that you and I were going to be friends here on Krakoa? I didn't know that old dude was there, what he was ever thinking, but I'm telling you what I'm thinking. Hey, what is that jammed in its paw? Is that metal? Okay, so instead of just immediately using his telekinesis to remove it, he goes, hatches some plan for armor to protect him, and he's going to shoot the animal first, because that's humane, um, and do all this stuff, and then finally go and grab it with his hands. Now... Why, why does this matter? Because ultimately he does use the telekinesis to pull it out because his hands don't work and he could have just done it right from the beginning, but we needed a couple extra pages to fill and he finds this sword, which is so cool. And now this isn't just any sword. It's the sword of guess who? Rom. Wrong. It's not Rom because Marvel no longer has the rights to Rom the Space Knight. Um, so it's now Morn the Space Knight. Um, and he sees this imagery and this Morn the Space Knight, Rom the Space Knight, it's the same, it, <laughs> uh, fought this beast and just got utterly destroyed. Now that's important. Pay attention. Um, with, it wasn't even a contest. The thing just <laughs> stepped on him. These kids just fought it off no problem. So that tells me that this Space Knight did not even have nearly potential of these kids. So... Nathan's like, I always wanted a big ass sword. He's making fun of his old self because it was big on guns. But now he's a sword. What's whatever. Uh, and then Scott shows up and they all hop to attention. I don't know what why. There's no discipline. These kids just do whatever they want. They don't get discipline, so I don't see why they would act this way. This is written by people who obviously have never actually had to deal with kids themselves or have kids. Um, then they have some flash forward or thing to another part of the universe where there's these, there's this museum and there's these space knights and they're talking about, um, uh, you know, that what long ago is lost civilization, blah, 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 blah. But then they start coming alive and they're like, the blade is, it's been found, blah, blah, blah. And then like, everyone's like, what the hell? Someone's animating the things and they don't realize, nope, we're actually alive. Come destiny awaits, they say. 
the position of the stars. We've okay, so that's we've been asleep too long. So they go to the sword is a thing that they have to get. Now, it makes it sound when you're reading this part that this sword is this ultimate powerful thing, and that these creatures or these space knights are these ultimate powerful beings. Dude just got flattened by a giant Muppet on Krakoa. I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. Are is these guys powerful? Because the dude who had the big epic sword, that, that's, he, that's it's nonsense. And then we cut to this. And I want you to pay attention to the final parts that everyone's saying, this is the best part of the book. Look at these scribbles. Another place, another time. Hiss, as a flaming eye crab talks. I promise you, no matter how long it takes, I will kill you for this affront to our sovereign lands. Look at these scribbles. This is literally like a, a sketch that you do for like thumbnails or just to like, what do they call them? Like layouts and just planning what you're going to actually draw. Uh, and then they just use that as the final drawing. Look at this. Look at this. This is art in a mar modern Marvel comic. What is that? And then we see a shadow. Where is he? Go to hell, old man. Kaboom. You first. And then it's like, oh, look. Old Cable's back. Look at that. It is like a scribble. What the hell is this? Look at this art. This is Marvel Comics. Cable number one. Look, I agree. It's cool to see old Cable. I like old Cable. He's way cooler than Kid Cable, who, a.k.a. Zach Morrison. But it doesn't matter if old Cable's back if it's going to be written by Gary Duggan. Do you understand? Like, hold your horses, fans. Like, oh, yes, old Cable's back. Did you just read the pages that came before? <laughs> Did you see how they're being written? This isn't cool. This is actually tragic because they can shit all over Kid Cable and I won't care because I don't care about Kid Cable. I care about this Cable. But now they're bringing him back to be shit on. And look at the art. Look, you paid $4 for this. Is this $4 or $5? I don't even remember. Ah. This is terrible. The Hunt. Um, so this is the Space Knights. So they don't even have the rights to do. Why are you bringing ROM into this? God, it's just, this is so pointless. It's like, is there, are you going to tell the story from House of X, Powers of X? That's what fans have been buying into. That's what we want. We want to know what's going on with this story with Moira and the future and the phalanx and Kokoa and the demon. Oh, no, no, we're going to pull Rom out of the ass. Rom that we don't even have the rights to because so we have to change the name. Like, screw this freaking book.